In this video, I am going to show you how you can go about analyzing a race using a more general race card. So this isn't a system as such, it's more of a strategy to show you how you can look for contenders um, and find contenders. And of course, this race card is available below this video as always. Now to start with, I am going to be looking for a race without too many runners. Uh, and we're going to look at a couple of races today. So. Um, I'm going to be looking at some races without too many runners uh, because it gets much more complicated the more runners you get. So it's always better to start off with less runners rather than more. Um, so let's start with this all weather flat here today. And you can see I've got a range of ratings in this card, which I call the all rounder raw. The reason I call it raw is because all these ratings are the raw ratings. Now, you may choose to make your own card um, that has rankings instead of the raw ratings. Um, I definitely recommend you start with rankings. There's a lot less information to process, um, and that makes it much easier. However, you can, of course, get more detail by using the difference from top or the raw ratings themselves. So I'm going to start by looking at the PFP, uh, which is a form rating. And we can see straight away that um, Express Mate and Prize Gold are the top two here. But if we look at the PFP class of the last good race, we can see that Prize Gold actually, while having quite a high PFP figure, his last good race was in a lower PFP class than this race is likely to be today. So there could be some struggling going on there. Right Stuff also has a good figure. Now the PFP rating starts at 1500 and we then add or subtract points based on the other horses in the race and how the horse performed. Um, so 518 is a good figure and um, we can see that again that the class of the last good race was quite high. Now one to point out here is Jack Dawkins who has probably not had that many races because the last good race um, was in a PFP class of 1530 but he's only got a PFP of 1501. So it's shown that he's performed but... Um, we can see he performed in a race that was a pretty high class in terms of PFP and he performed well in that race um, but he hasn't got the highest PFP himself so let's move on so we've, we've got a bit of an idea here already of, of the types of horses that we're looking in uh, Tornado Force is the only one we haven't talked about and Tornado Force from those two is just looking kind of uh, pretty middle of the road now there's a little trick here we can use with the upper confidence and lower confidence levels. Now we see right stuff has got a big variance between upper and lower. Um, and that is always um, a bit of a warning bell. Okay? Um, that means there's a lot of volatility, something's gone wrong. Uh, it's just a, a bit of a warning sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore right stuff for the purposes of this for the moment. And... I'm going to take Express Mate as the top rated, and I'm ignoring right stuff because of this big variance here um, in, in the confidence levels. So let's look at Express Mate as the top rated, and, and we can see that the upper confidence is 1550 and the lower confidence is 1514. Now, look at Jack Dawkins. The highest we expect Jack Dawkins to be, with 95% confidence, is 1511 which is less than Express Mate's lowest expected performance today. Um, so the best expected performance from Jack Dawkins is less than the lowest expected performance from Express Mate. Uh, and to be honest, that's a sign that we can mark Jack Dawkins as an elimination. Now, we do need to bear in mind he's probably not had very many races, and, and this is a, you know, we need to remember that so that if we come to the market and we see that this horse is shortly priced um, we may want to revise that thinking right so we've already got one non-contender and we're starting to understand the race I mean right stuff we've got some concern about um, Express Mate is looking like it's going to be very strong 
Um, Prior's goal, we got a bit of concern about the last good race being in such a low class. And Tornado Force is looking kind of, you know, pretty middle of the road and decent. Now, we haven't really got enough figures in, in this uh, speed figure adjusted column here, so I'm going to ignore that for this race. But uh, here is a very interesting one. So, this is the average uh, speed figure that the horse have achieved over the last four races. Now, if it hasn't got four races, it will be over the last three or the last two or however many races there have been. And it's a TD figure, which means that it, there is a time decay um, applied to it. So, the longer ago the race took place, the less important it is. Um, right start uh, has had by far the highest figure, and then comes Express Made and Jack Dawkins and Tornado Force are all pretty close to each other, so they're all much of a muchness. Prior's goal, however, is way down at the bottom, and this is an all-weather flat race, so so we, the speed figures are important, and um, this this gives us a bit of cause for concern here. Uh, combined with the lower class of the race, uh, the last time they had a good race with low class, so I'm going to actually mark Prior's goal as an elimination. Again, we haven't finished going along. There may be something else that um, there may be something else that the highlights that this horse should come back into the fold but for the moment he's not looking strong right stuff we still have reservations about because of this big warning sign here the confidence levels being so widely spread out um, express mate is looking stronger as we go along and tornado force is still looking strong so let's move to the next rating which is the uh, average speed figure over the last 60 days. Now Expressmate uh, suddenly shoots to the top here uh, with a very strong average speed figure over the last 60 days. Um, Tornado Force is kind of middle of the road and pretty much where we expected uh, to be, uh, to be honest. So there's um, not much surprise there. Now Jack Dawkins noticed we've marked him as an elimination because uh, we're not sure if he had the class to race today on the PFP figures. Um, but he's hitting a pretty middle of the road average over the last 60 days, um, as is Tornado Force in this field. Um, however, Express Mate has, uh, you know, we can mark Express Mate now as a, as a contender. And again, we may continue to go through and find something that wants us to, to remove this runner as a contender. But for now, uh, we're going to mark it as a contender. Now let's look at the best ever average speed figure in the last 60 days. So what does this mean? This rating um, is one of my favourites and it's the best performances. Um, so what it means is, is that Expressmate in the last 60 days has raced the best horses that Express mate has raced against in the last 60 days have averaged a speed figure of 243. So what this means is, is we can see that Express Mate has been racing in better races than Prior's Gold. Because in, in the races that Prior's Gold has been in, the best horses have averaged a speed figure of 165 in the last 60 days. Uh, so it gives us a, an idea of the quality of race that the horse has been racing in. And the fact that Express Mate has been racing in, in the toughest races, the best races, uh, with, with better horses achieving higher figures is, uh, is a good sign. Now, interestingly, Jack Dawkins has also been racing in uh, pretty strong races as well. Um, whereas uh, Right Snuff and, and Tornado Force are uh, not so strong. But, I mean, Tornado Force, we already have decided, is a bit of a middle-of-the-road runner, so we're not that surprised um, about the uh, BE average 60 being there. Um, so at the moment everything's looking good. We've got a few pointers that we may want to consider Jack Dawkins again um, or at least remove as an elimination. Um, right Staff is looking to be a bit of a middle of the road runner with a big concern over this uh, confidence level difference. So, so let's keep going. You can see how we're building up a very um, solid picture of this race so 
speed regression level now, uh, and this indicates where we expect the horse to perform today. Um, and tornado force is uh, is right up there. So we're expecting tornado force to put in a good, strong race today. Um, you know, based on improvement. So this means that the horse will have to continue to improve at the level it's already been improving at. Um, if it does that, we expect it to be running well. Of course, there is no guarantee that it will do that. So um, we don't know whether that's going to happen or not. Um, but should it continue to improve, then we can expect it to be, you know, a, a bit of a contender in this race. And um, although it, it's a kind of middle of the road horse, we probably want to consider this as a contender now. Um, Jack Dawkins is also looking stronger and stronger, and I think we should remove the elimination. Um, and right stuff, we've still got some concerns about here. Um, it's, it's middle of the road on most things or with the big. Uh, I'm putting quite a lot of weight on the, on this big uh, difference here. Right, speed regression angles are the same for all of them. And days since the last good race, where well, we can see Jack Dawkins, again, uh, had a good race recently, uh, as did Prize Gold, but likely to be at a much, well, is at a much lower class level. And we can see that both on the uh, average speed figure of the best horse in the last 60 days and also on the PFP class of the last good race was 14.97 48 days ago whereas Jack Dawkins was 15.30 just seven days ago so that confirms our our opinions there and uh, Express Mate's last good race was 183 days ago and again that's not too far I wouldn't be too concerned about that horse win percents are pretty much even throughout and so that kind of has completed our picture of this race. And we can see we've removed prize gold. Jack Dawkins we need to consider. Right stuff we have some serious concerns about. I'll probably mark him as an elimination. Tornado Force we brought back in um, as a possible uh, contender on the speed regression because it's obviously been improving. And then Express Mate has always looked strong. Okay, so now let's take a look at this race. It's just gone off, so I'm gonna open up Betfair here, and we can see um, that right stuff went off at 2.95. Now let's just bring that back. Right stuff we'd marked as an eliminator, uh, an elimination, but Tornado Force, um, in fact, the market was all very close. It's just been suspended. Um, but we can see Jack Dawkins was 3.1, Tornado Force was 4 something, and Prize Gold was 9.22. Um, now, Express Mate had very high odds, which indicates we have missed something. And that's fine, that will happen. Um, all that happens when we do that is we, we go back, we reassess, um, and we, we take off the contender. But notice that Tornado Force, which was our other contender, um, here looks like it's won the race um, and won it quite well. So we can see in the place market uh, who looks to have placed. Um, let's go to time form. Have a quick look to see if the results have come in. The fast results are probably not in yet. Um, then the quick results here Tornado Force, um, Jack Dawkins, and Express May actually did place at odds of 6.88. So we, we probably missed something out in Express May, but we also highlighted a runner that placed at excellent odds. Um, and Jack Dawkins was the one we were unsure about, we were going to use the market on, and Tornado Force was our other contender. So, all in all, um, Two of our contenders came in first and third, and another horse that we were going to use with the market came in second. So, as you can see, uh, that was a, a pretty good race that we ana analysed there. Okay, so let's look at another race. Um, here we go, let's find another uh, small 
field. Um, let's do a different race type. Uh, a seven. Here we go. Seven runner handicap hurdle. Um, Three fifty five at Weber Weatherby. Class four. Okay, and we were, you'll see that we, we do exactly the same process. I'm going to start by looking at the PFPs and, and comparing that to the PFP class of the last good race. And we can see that um, Majals is at the top here, but the last good race uh, was pretty strong, um, although not, not the best class of, of all the runners in this field, but pretty strong. Um, Turbo Durage and Bo Badger are pretty close to each other and notice how their last good race is a very um, matching of their PFP and what this indicates is that they're still running at this level so um, because the PFP here um, obviously this horse has been running well but um, it's been putting in some good figures its PFP has been rising but the class of its last good race was a bit lower um, so it may have been achieving these points in, in, in lower, slightly lower grade races, and we can see that there. Um, Upswing uh, is in a similar situation. It's been racing well, uh, but maybe a, a lower class um, than Turbo de Ranch and Bow Badger. And then Rocking Blues and Green Wizard are you know, very near the 1500 baseline. However, I know the code um, it has already lost points. And, and that isn't that isn't very good. So I'm going to come and do the uh, the PFP upper lower trick, and we can see that Majal is fifteen three two with a lower confidence of fifteen oh six, uh, and we can immediately see that the upper confidence on Green Wizard and I know the code. I think that's yeah the, the full name of the horse. I know the code is lower than that lowest confidence level for Majal. Uh, so I'm going to remove them. And again, nothing's definitive, nothing's changeable until afterwards. We're just trying to understand how this race may take place. Rocking Blues is going to be pretty close on the line. Um, and, and for now, I'm going to mark him as an elimination. Um, because the, uh, the best performance we expect is going to be at the lowest expected performance from Joel. So while there's potential there, if there's improvement and all the rest, it, it's, it's pretty close. And for now, I'm going to mark as an elimination. So we've already narrowed this field down to four runners. Now we can look at this time at the uh, adjusted speed figure from the last race. So we don't have one for Green Wizard. Um, and that could be for a variety of reasons. But uh, Turbo de Ranch is a looking... Um, pretty strong based on the last race um, and, and you may want to add the weight field in here so we can see the, the weights let's let's do that now I'm gonna come out of this race go to the race card edit it um, and add the weight field in just there save it again and then we can come back and, and reopen this race and we've got the weight so let's sort again by Turbo de Ranch, we can see 42, uh, and is looking pretty pretty well weighted as well. So I mean that's a, that's a a good mark for um, for this runner. Also with a good PFP figure, uh, uh, a good PFP class of the last good race. So so Turbo de Ranch is already looking strong. Um, upswing um, could be a little bit overweighted here. Um, uh, as could Majals, which isn't unsurprising. But Bo Badger um, looks to be possibly the worst off. Anyway, let's continue to move on um, to the average uh, speed figure over the last four races using Time Decay. And Bo Badger, I mean, 31 is very, very low. Okay, so now we can move on to the um, speed average over the last four races using Time Decay. And um, we can see that we have 31 here, which is very low. Uh, but then we have Turbo de Ranch again 
um, with the strongest by quite a way, 113 being the next strongest from Green Wizard. Um, 120 there. So, so looking to be strong over the last four races, and we'll see how that pans out over the next few figures. Upswing, not looking good, uh, and we haven't been able to create um, speed ratings for Majals for some reason. Um, and there are a variety of reasons that we may not have been able to do this. The most common is, is that we don't have enough uh, data to be able to create a standard time for the course and conditions that the horse has been running over. And without a standard time, uh, we can't create an accurate speed rating. So this, this boosts our opinion of Turbo Durange and puts a little bit more concern uh, on Bo Badger. Um, uh, however, looking at these three runners here that we've already eliminated, they've actually been performing pretty well um, with each other in comparison to each other in the middle of the field here over the last few races, last four races. So uh, that's something to bear in mind as well. Um, again, we'll leave them as eliminations for the moment, but we may come back and change that in a little bit. So the average speed figure over the last 60 days, uh, again, at Turbo Durage is at the top um, by quite a long way and followed up by Rocking Blues. Now, Rocking Blues uh, was the horse, if you remember, that was just on the edge of our 1506 upper confidence here. Um, but with, with a, it's looking to have a decent speed in the last four runs. Um, good comparative over the last 60 days um, so it's starting to look a little bit stronger here then Bo Badger comes next quite a way behind uh, we still have some concerns there and followed by I know the code and upswing who are, who are quite a way behind there so we've got Turbo de Ranch uh, and Rocking Blues starting to look good here um, We've got a bit of interest in possibly Green Wizard, but not as much as Rocking Blues, because Rocking Blues was on our 1506 level. Let's look at how the horses they've been racing against have been performing. Now, I know the code has got the low PFP, and has obviously been racing in, in, in against pretty good horses here over the last 60 days, and that's, um, that's a concern. Um, the horses in this race are likely to be um, probably a bit better uh, than, than I know the code but possibly not as good as it's been racing against so we may see some improvement there um, Bo Badger, Green Wizard and Turbo de Ranch have all been racing at a fairly similar level to be honest which again boosts Turbo de Ranch and I think we want to mark this horse as a contender um, again whereas Rocking Blues and Upsway have been racing in less competitive races so um, we bear that in mind again and nothing stands out at the moment for us to want to to change Rocking Blues or Green Wizard just yet although both look to have some potential now assuming that the improvement continues as it is upswing here is looking to run a, a strong race if it continues to improve at the level it's been continuing which is high um, and we haven't marked this runner as a non-contender this is a potential horse um, it hasn't been performing as well or in such good races but this improvement is significant uh, and something that we need to bear in mind so this horse could run a strong race if there is an improvement and again we can see that the angle here uh, it, it is showing at what level it's been improving now here is uh, our interesting figures here now Majals hasn't had a good race for over a year um, in fact over three years um, so I'm actually gonna mark Majal is an elimination. Something may come along uh, to change that, uh, in which case that's fine. Um, let's just move this along a bit here. Um, 
We also have that with Rocking Blues, which is a concern, and Bo Badger, who we had a little bit of doubt about anyway, so I'm going to mark Bo Badger as an elimination. Now, Turbo Durant has also not had a good race in over uh, two years, which, which is a concern. Um, combined with an 8% win rate. So, we have some concerns there, but the figures look good. Um, so we're going to have to use the market now in this race because we're left really with upswing as the only real horse that we might be interested in. Um, but that's because so these runners haven't had a good race in so long. Um, whereas upswing has. But if the other runners could come back to a bit of form then they have some potential. So I think now we need to go and look at the market. Um, so let's head over and this was the um, 3.55. So let's pull up the 3.55 here, Weatherby. And we've got an interesting market here. We can see that Turbo de Ranch is, is the favorite. Um, which strengthens our opinion um, and actually there probably is some value there the concern is that this uh, you know it's been two two years since the last good race uh, then Majal comes in at 4.6 and to be honest we're missing a lot of figures here um, and hasn't had a good race in over one 1,088 days um, but has won a lot of its races and a percentage and looks to be strong. However, I'd be concerned about not having had a good race in, in such a long period of time. Um, so I wouldn't want to take odds of 4.6. Now, Upswing was our other runner here. And he's a non-runner today, as we can see. So that removes this horse, which was our only real uh, horse that... Um, we liked that her, has run a good race recently. Of the others, I know the Code and Green Wizard. Uh, we can see Green Wizard here is quite high odds, and then it's a question of whether it can beat uh, Turbo de Ranch. Uh, possibly Rocking Blues had some good points. If you remember, we looked at some various good points there, particularly on the improvement. Um, but. Um, we, there is a bit of concern, so that means that for us, our uh, bet, the one that I would go for in this race would probably be Turbo de Ranch. Um, I might spread that across Rocking Blues as well, who I think you know has some potential. Um, but this can clearly be a race where anything can happen. Um, it's always worth looking at the other markets, uh, and we can see that actually Turbo de Ranch is odds of two to be placed there's only two being placed in this race of course um and again here we've got turbo de ranch versus Bo badger now look at these odds i would much prefer turbo de ranch over Bo badger so i would actually um be happy to back turbo de ranch at 1.44 to beat Bo Badger. I think that could be a good bet. It's important to always look at other markets uh, with whatever bookies you're betting at to see if there's other ways that you can um, structure your bet based on your opinion that may be better than just betting into the straight win markets. Um, so we like five and three for example but we know that Giles has a chance two and one also have potential um, so maybe we can do a combination of reverse forecasts here um, that could well be a better way this one certainly looks to be a good bet to me and I would probably be looking at Turbo de Ranch uh, possibly Rocky Blues as a Dutch there or Turbo de Ranch as a win okay so that is an overview of how we can use these cards to do a, a, a more formal analysis of a race um, I hope that you found it useful and if you've got any questions head over to the forum put them in and let me know and I will get back to you thank you very much for watching